Wanting to get into video creation, but not quite sure where to start with the hundreds of camera options out there. I've tested a lot of cameras for video. I'm gonna help you narrow down that choice by giving you my suggestions for the best cameras for beginner filmmakers in 2024. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the camera is just a tool in the filmmaking process and going out and buying the most expensive one you can find is not going to automatically make your videos good. It's learning how things like lens choice, lighting, framing, just to name a few, are used with that camera to tell a good story that will make your videos then stand out. But before we get to the camera recommendations, there are three things to keep in mind, and those are the sensor size, the resolution, and the frame rate. And I've made in-depth videos on all three of these topics that are linked in the description to help you better understand them. But if you are already familiar with these concepts, then go ahead and skip ahead to this timestamp to see the camera recommendations. But for a quick overview, your sensor size is going to determine how well your camera does in lower lighting conditions, and also what field of view your lens sees. Your resolution is going to determine whether your footage is full HD at 1080p or 4K, which is four times full HD. And then there's frame rate, which is normally 24 frames per second in video. And with 60 frames per second or higher, you have the ability to slow your footage down in editing for those nice slow motion shots. And each of these cameras also has an external microphone input, which is important because you do not want to rely on the onboard camera mics because even though they are getting better, they still just don't compare to a quality shotgun mic on your camera. And I have links in the description to the best prices I could find on Amazon or B&H for all the cameras I'm covering, which cost you nothing extra, but will greatly help out the channel if you decide to buy through them. First up, we have the Canon R50 for $679 and the Sony ZV E10 for $698. And before you go writing in the comments, those cameras are way too expensive to be beginner cameras. Keep in mind that beginner doesn't necessarily mean cheap. Filmmaking is definitely not a cheap industry to get into, and these cameras are actually quite inexpensive compared to professional video gear. And if these prices are too high for you right now, I wouldn't suggest running out and getting something that's even cheaper because you can still learn lighting and framing techniques to get the most out of the camera that you keep in your pocket every single day. But anyways, both cameras have a 25 megapixel APS-C size sensor, which crops the lens focal length by 1.6 times on the R50 and 1.5 times on the ZV-E10. Both cameras have an articulating touchscreen, giving the ability to use touch autofocus and see yourself when recording, which is great for vlogging or making YouTube videos like this. The ZV-E10 does not have a viewfinder, so you'll have to use the articulating touchscreen for photos, whereas the R50 does have an electronic viewfinder, giving you the option to use that for photos photo or video. Both cameras can shoot 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second with no extra cropping of the video, as well as Full HD up to 120 frames per second, which allows you to get really smooth slow motion footage. The Canon R50 unfortunately has a 60 minute video recording limit, which is better than the previous limit of 30 minutes on Canon cameras, but the ZV-E10 has no video recording limit, so you can record up to the point where you run out of space on your SD card. And even though both cameras are nearly the same price, the ZV-E10 does does have more video features such as picture profiles that allow you even more control over the video quality and options for post-production as you learn more about improving your videos. There are also more native and third-party lens options for the ZV-E10 as compared to the R50 with its relatively new RF mount that has a more limited range of lenses if you don't want to have to use adapters. And speaking of lenses, I have videos on lens suggestions for both of these cameras that will help you to get the most out of either one of them when it comes to the video features and look that you'll want to have. Both of these are great beginner cameras for under a thousand dollars so let me know down in the comments which one you're more interested in or if you just have any questions about them. I do have another video comparing these cameras video features in more depth along with sample footage if you're interested in learning more about them but if you do have more money to invest in a camera that will really last you a long time then the Canon R8 for $1,500 or the Sony a7C for $1,600 are both great choices. Both of these cameras have full frame sensors which are much larger and will give Give you way better performance in low light and a shallower depth of field. Both cameras offer an articulating touchscreen that give you that ability to use touch autofocus and tracking. The a7C has a tiny viewfinder that's pretty much useless for photos so you'll need to stick with the rear monitor for that. The EOS R8 offers 4k recording up to 60 frames per second for 4k slow motion capability whereas the a7C tops out at 30 frames per second. And both cameras are capable of shooting up to 120 frames per second in full HD. The Canon R8 offers 
all those resolutions and frame rates at 422 10-bit, whereas the A7C is older and only has 420 8-bit. I know that sounds really technical, but I have videos explaining both color sampling and bit depth in a simplified way to help you understand how that can affect your videos. And something else I really need to stress is do not buy the Canon M50 or M50 Mark II for video. The R50 is the RF mount replacement for the M50, and it fixed all the problems that came with the M50, like a huge crop in 4K that also rendered the autofocus useless when using 4K. The M50 also has an even more limited range of lenses, and it looks like the RF system is what Canon is going to be pushing for all its mirrorless cameras in the future. And after spending time with each of these cameras, I do prefer the Sony models because of the extra video features that they offer, but in the end, remember that the camera is just a tool in the filmmaking process, and it's the skills you learn and how to use that tool to tell a good story that's going to make your videos good. And I have a lot of other videos on the channel that are linked in the description to help you with learning to use whatever camera you decide to get to make great looking videos that will tell a good story. So regardless of whatever camera you choose, just make sure to practice with it every day so that you can learn how to better engage your audience through video. And if this video is helpful, then please help me out by hitting that like button. Subscribe if you're new. There is tons of stuff on the channel to help you go from knowing absolutely nothing about your camera to being able to make money with it. So be sure to check out the playlist, leave comments with any questions you have, and I'll see y'all in the next one.